Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today's topics are errors and exceptions. In the last couple of days I received more and more questions about how I can really read an error message and how do I find a good solution for that. So in this episode we want to take a closer look on what errors are, where they occur, how to read a stack trace and what even is a stack trace. And after this episode I really hope that you understand that errors and exceptions are your friend and not your enemy. But now, without further ado, let's get started. This video is supported by Bluehost. The thing that we are talking today is exceptions and errors, which usually lead to a lot of red text in the terminal and that the application crashes that we have at the moment. So for new developers it is usually pretty annoying and for senior developers who have learned already to work with them, they love them. Especially if you no work two days or longer on an exception that you see all the time, every time the same one and suddenly it changed and you just get another exception, but it tells you something completely different. The best feeling of the world, I can tell you. Exceptions and errors in Dart and Flutter are amazing because of the fantastic tooling that we have today. We can have a stack trace, can jump directly into code, we directly see an error message that we can google for and usually we find thanks to Stack Overflow directly an answer to our problems. That is fantastic and we should really appreciate that. Especially if you're coming from an old veteran the programming language, this is not always has been the case. So if you searched for an error, sometimes you didn't get any information about it. But before I tell too much stories all the day, let's check out what the difference is between an error and an exception. Because both are technically the same, but they behave different and have different semantics surrounding it. An error according to the Dart documentation, is an error object represents a program failure that the programmer should have avoided. So actually, if you see an error, it's your fault. <laughs> but if you see an exception, on the other hand, an exception comes from external sources where we don't know why it is broken. So for example, we make an API call and we receive an internet problem. Yeah, so the internet connection is shut down. With that, we usually receive exceptions that we can handle. So to make it short and understandable, errors are things that we can improve, exceptions are things that we have to handle. So we cannot make sure that they will not occur just because we program better. Another very important fact that you have to keep in mind is that only because we know the difference between an error and an exception, not every developer is aware of that. So that means sometimes the borders from an error to an exception are very thin. So it could be that you get an error but actually it meant as an exception and exactly the opposite side around. So it could be that a maintainer of a package does not know this difference and use only exceptions for example. Okay, to understand how errors and exception work directly, we will take a look into the code base and jump into our counter app example. From here we will understand how we can throw an error, how we can throw an exception, we will take a look into how to read the stack trace and understand on which parts we can solve the problems with that. Additionally, I want to check if we make an HTTP request and we receive an error exception there, how can we catch this exception and do something on behalf of that. So if something went wrong, we want to fix that immediately in code. All right, so fantastic. The improved error shows us already more information and helps our colleagues and developer friends to solve these problems because errors are not only for us, they are also for the entire community who work on that code base. So for an open source, it could be your team. If you are working in a company, it's all other developers surrounding you. You don't do this stuff for yourself, you do it for everyone. So make sure to make them correctly. But how can we handle problems or exceptions in that case if we for example call an API? Let's have a look. The improved error will not only help ourselves by improving the code base, no it will help everyone to understand your code way better. They know what they can do and what they can't do, what they have to provide and so on and so forth. So with errors you usually harden your code base. But how can we handle now things that are out of our control? So for example we use the HTTP package and call an API that does not exist. Let's try that out now. So welcome in our code base. As you can see on the right side we have our emulator up and running. 
And if I press the plus sign, we will increase our counter as we know our counter app, right? But now let's throw our first error. And to make that very simple, we can just remove this line. So if we don't pass in a title into the My Homepage widget, we will get our first error. Fantastic. So if we take a look into our console, we get this right message here. We will receive a stack trace, which will inform us from where the error is occurred. And we will get the information where exactly it happened and what exactly happened. So if we read now the error message, a non-null string must be provided to a text widget, we understand directly that it has to be something around a text widget and that we didn't give any value, so it cannot be null. So if we take a look further, we can click on this here. But you can see that we are jumping right away into the text.dart, which is uh, somewhere deep dived inside of the Flutter material part. So if I'm looking, if I'm looking for this assertion that happened here, we will find that here somewhere. So as you can see, we have an assertion that happens directly after the constructor of text. This fails. So and the other string that we got is the relevant error causing widget was my homepage. And if I'm clicking here, we jump right away to the position and location where we can fix the problem. Because we passed here a title inside or no title inside. We passed in null. This title is null. And this title now has been used inside of a text widget. Do you think that was completely obvious? No? Good. So let us improve this error message a little bit. Thanks to assertions of the constructors, we have a powerful tool to throw our errors if a specific assertion fails. If we add after our constructor, so at this location here, another assertion function, so we make assert, and now make sure that after that we make a uh, comma because that separates our assertions and the super call after the columns of a constructor. And now we can ask that title is unequal to null. The second parameter is a message that we can provide to our other developers and ourselves to improve the stability of this information and to know where the error occurs. If we make now a hot reload and take another look into our terminal, we can see we get another error message, the title cannot be null, that we provided and we get a link to the place where this error occurred, which is directly here at the widget. Fantastic. With that we make it way easier to debug our problems and find the best solutions for that problem. The improved error will help our colleagues already because they ways faster see the error and receive an information, informative description of the problem. But how can we handle problems that happened out of our control? For example, we make a network call to another API. Let's go to the pubspec.yaml and add the dependency HTTP. I do that just with any so that we get the first version that occurs here. And let's fix our application again by providing a title. Now that our API is running again, let's search for the increment counter method. That happens whenever we click that button. Now here we want to make our very first imp uh, HTTP call. First we have to scroll on the top and have to import the HTTP package. Don't forget to give it a name like as HTTP so that we can use it. Now let's add HTTP.get to a URL that does not exist like ASDF ASDF. So let's hit the button and see how the request performs. As we can see, we receive an error or better an exception in this case. We have an unhandled exception with invalid arguments, no host specified in the URI ASDF ASDF. You should always read your errors from the top because sometimes you come down here and you can see this is the so-called stack trace. And the stack trace will show you in which part of the application you are and what happened before your call has been done until the error is finally thrown. So how I usually work, if I'm searching for something on Google, I'm looking for the error message here. And if I'm finding nothing, I will go into the stack trace. And inside of the stack trace, we begin at the top at zero and scroll that far till we find something that belongs to us. So HTTP client is some third party stuff, IO client, I don't know, get anonymous closure, I don't know. My homepage state increment counter 
Hmm, I heard something about that. And here is the error tutorial main.dart. So that seems to be our class. Ah, here the error happened. Fantastic. Good to know. So now we can fix this part here. The line count with, with that here on that part will help you to navigate inside of the error, make it possible to find the error message easier because it's always on the top of it. So the error message is pretty straightforward. Invalid arguments, no host specified in URI, ASDF, ASDF. So actually the problem is that we didn't provide HTTPS, uh, HTTPS in front of it. And if we hot reload again, press our button, it will make a request, but as you can see, we get the next error, an OS error, no address associated with the host name. Okay, so we have to change something more. So let's search for google.de, for example, and make our hot reload. We click again our button and you see no error occurred because this website actually exists. All right, but what would be if we would like to try this part here? And after that, if this is failing, then we want to react on it in a certain way. For that, we have try and catch. With try, we execute this code and now we want to catch something. So if there happens an exception, we want to get this information and work with it. So I want to spell here in this catch part, you want to be always as specific as possible with your error that you want to catch. Because you could also say you want to catch every exception. But this is used as a bad practice because what happens is that all the exception that could be fired are catched here. But you want to be specific with your errors. So we know it is an argument error. And if we press now again, you see nothing happens. That's because we swallow the error at the moment. We never want to do that. That means we get an error, but we don't show it to anyone and we just catch it in an empty uh, catch block. This is one of the anti-patterns that we don't want to do. We want to at least print the error somewhere. Usually we have one logger for that that exists over the whole application. In our case, we just print E. And if I press again, we get the error message, but we actually um, tried to execute this process and we could do something else. Instead of printing, we could also return or we could um, increase the counter by 10 if this is our goal here. So that means if this HTTP get have an error, then we want to increase the counter by 10. And this works properly. So we know now exactly what happens. We can catch and we got the error console command. So what have we learned? As always, there are some things to keep in mind by error handling. Never swallow an error. Additionally, a very important part is don't forget that assertion functions, as you we created that for the constructor up here, are not part of the production build. When you build, uh, when you build your application and provide it in production mode, all these assertions will be ignored. In the last couple of weeks, I was working more and more on our website. I learned the hard way how important a reliable web hoster is for your website. On my research, I came across Bluehost. It helped me to host my web space and additionally had some fantastic offers to get my URL and brought my website up and running. I'm still working on it, but soon you will have the chance to see our website and our blog again. Thanks to Bluehost and the fantastic support, it was super easy to set up my website and start working on it. So check out the link down in the video description below. All right, now we have understood how exceptions and errors work in Dart. And now we can handle them correctly and we can understand how the stack trace is working and how we can search and find solutions to our errors. Fantastic. In one of the upcoming videos, I will show you five common mis uh, <clears throat> In one of the upcoming videos, I will show you five common errors that you have in Dart and Flutter and how you can resolve them. Thank you for watching this time. Like, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. See ya guys.